one minute with Eric. So this is a five minute where we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive on how do you start your company. So the scenario I had, and this is actually right from real life, I had a call yesterday. This young lady was an IT staffing recruiter and she was also a consultant and she also wants to do coaching. So she asks me, she goes, listen, I have a client ready to hire me right now, but I don't have my company set up. I don't have a bank account. I don't really have a good contract yet. What should I do? Should I go ahead and sign up this client right away and have them pay me money? Now, the short answer is I would prefer that you do business in the name of your company, right? That's the reason why we set up an LLC. LLC stands for limited liability company. And that limited liability means that if something goes really, really wrong and you get sued, they're suing your company and whatever assets are in that company, which presumably it's a startup, nothing, right? Versus them suing you personally and then being able to go after you for the next 20 years and, and put garnishments on your job and try to go after your bank accounts, et cetera. So she goes, well, what, what's the process? What are the steps? And I said, listen, setting up an LLC takes a number of days. In fact, if you spend the extra $50, you can use an expediter here in Florida. And then I think it's a college kid up in Tallahassee who walks the paper filings right across the street on his lunch break. And I'm pretty sure he's paying his whole tuition with it. And so you create your LLC, couple days, pre-COVID, it was easily 24 to 48 hours online. Now it's maybe taking a little bit more. They still haven't worked out all the kinks. Then that's step one. Step two, and you can actually start step two before step one is get a bank account. Now, what I mean by that is you can, you can contact your banker and say, hey banker, I'm going to be setting up an LLC. Can you go ahead and send me all the paperwork I need to get this started because I don't wanna have anything slow me down. And so even if it's just you fill in everything and then add the LLC name and the EIN, which is the tax ID number from the IRS, um, you add those in and then you give it to your banker. Um, and you can get that ball rolling. Now, a quick aside, I believe every entrepreneur needs four professionals in their lives. They need an accountant, a banker, an insurance agent, and a business lawyer, and not necessarily in that order, but these need to be people that are friendly. Now, how do I describe friendly? They're not your friends. I'm not suggesting you hang out with them on the weekends. What I'm saying is that if you text them, and that's why I recommend you use a real person, right? You can't text Bank of America, no offense, but you can text a community banker and he, his, phone will go, his or her phone will go off and they'll like, I usually make an example. I will text my banker and then they will respond before I'm even done with the conversation. So you wanna have a community banker and the community banker, I say, hey, Chris, um, I'm setting up a new company. Can you get everything ready? He goes, yeah, no problem. Just send me the name and the EIN once you get it. Okay, so that's step two. So now when that client mails you a check, you ask them to put it in the name of the LLC, you deposit it into that bank account, and that's really the first step on the way to protecting your liability, right? Because now you've, you've separated your personal assets from your business assets. That's called uh, uh, avoiding commingling. And then step three is you should have a good contract. Again, you can start step three even before you start step one or two. You can have a good client services agreement. So in her case, she's gonna be offering three different services. So maybe she needs three different versions. One is she wants to do IT staffing. So that's a staffing contract. That is different than a consulting agreement. So a staffing contract, typically, it's a percentage of the first year salary of the, of the, of the position that you place. Whereas a consulting agreement might be hourly, it might be flat fee, it might be monthly subscription. It's a couple different models. And then thirdly, she wants to do coaching. Coaching similar to the consulting, right? It might be hourly, it might be uh, monthly, or it might be a subscription. And so in any case, she, she can have those contracts, maybe you start with a solid terms and conditions, and then you create version A for staffing, version B for consulting, version C for coaching, and pretty much, that's the, the fundamentals of what you need. Now, depending on where you are, you might need licenses and permits. That's also research you can do before you get started. Every industry is a little different and every state and even community is a little different. So for example, if you're setting up a consulting business in California, they got a lot of different rules than if you set up a consulting business in Florida. So this is your due diligence that you can do before you even quit your job and give your boss two weeks notice that you're gonna quit and start your own firm. So I created a quick little, and I'm going to be quick, I think this thing is 20 pages long, but it's an entrepreneur guide. It is not meant to actually teach the law. What it's meant to do is just teach an entrepreneur topics that they should be available, or should be knowledgeable about, right? Or at least questions that they know they should ask, um, that maybe they don't even know that they don't know that they don't know. 
So guys, if you have any questions, I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs and startups. This is uh, the era of people going out on their own. So please leave a comment below, email me directly. I'm happy to do free consultations. Let's talk soon.